there. We have around 500 acres, 400 of which is permanent pasture and about 100 acres of woodland. Mum and Dad farmed together for about 35 years and ran a fairly conventional system with beef and sheep, but always did have an eye on the environmental side. So they planted thousands of trees, many miles of hedgerow. And then back in uh, so 2016 time, um, my dad sadly became quite poorly, so mum took the really tough decision to sell all the livestock and much of the handling equipment, and all of the grazing then went out on annual grazing licences. But that's sort of how the farm was managed until around sort of 2020. Um, during that time, very sadly lost my dad. I decided to then come home. I was only meant to be here for three months, but decided to stay. And a couple of years into working uh, alongside mum, we decided that the grazing licenses that had been working well, we actually were keen to take the farm in a slightly different direction. So we ended those licenses, and then our main passion really wanted to put all our energy then into regenerating the soils. A big part of that transition was doing some training in holistic management. We bought a small herd of pedigree Aberdeen Angus. They were introduced last November and then mum and I managed those using holistic planned grazing where we divide the farm up into smaller paddocks using electric fencing and then move twice a week. So they're only ever on one paddock for say three or four days and then they're moved on and we try and give the paddocks anywhere between five to seven months rest depending on the time of year and we really focus on planning the rest period almost more than planning the grazing. Giving the plants time to recover is then helping to improve all of those key natural processes which is in turn helping us to regenerate the soil. We're part of the DEFRA Test and Trials programme, which is feeding into the future environmental land management schemes. A few years ago, I was in, involved with another water quality project, and that's actually when I met Tom McNamara, who founded the company FreeUp, and they build uh, low-cost, real-time water sensors that monitor the turbidity, colour and temperature of the water. So we've got 21 units overall, um, and that's spread across the catchment. These are pieces of hardware in the river, all self-cleaning, and sending the data in real time to a dashboard. We then have farmer meetings where we discuss the data. It's really important we engage with farmers to get these sensors in a format where it works for them. So what we're trying to do is to really democratise water quality monitoring so that anyone, regardless of technical ability, can deploy it, and so people can work together much more effectively and to just try and make a more positive future by understanding where the good and the bad is so we can really work on addressing the bad and um, exemplifying the good. Through the trial we were working with Harper Adams University so it's great to have their specialist knowledge involved in the project as well. For us as a, a catchment group what we want to do is we're trying to increase the time it takes from when that water droplet lands from the rain to when we're measuring it in the river. Wherever that measurement is happening and all the processes that happen between where that raindrop lands and where we then actually measure it. It's interesting because as a, a country, I suppose, we have focus on the downstream. There's lots of monitoring stations towards the sea. We know what the quality is like coming out of these big catchments. Headwaters were often ignored, really. In the last 15, 20 years, we've been getting better at trying to sense these upstream areas trying to kind of capture those small declines because cumulatively they have this big impact. One mil of rainfall times one metre squared of land equals one litre of water. So last year we had about 732 mil of rainfall. We've got 1,029 hectares in the project. So if my maths is right, every year the farms in the project have the potential to hold on to seven and a half billion litres of water which is phenomenal and imagine if all that water is hitting our land running off straight into the watercourses no wonder we're seeing the effects of flooding and the kind of damage it's causing with water erosion. I think when we talk about water quality it's a lot of doom and gloom um, so to actually have people passionate about improving it and coming together and being willing to work together and collaborate on it is huge and I think having that come from the bottom up is so important. <laughs>